Welcome to The Simple Truth. Uh, the last few weeks we've been talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and how they're to be used as a, a witnessing tool. And so this week I was wanting to look at uh, some witnessing that, that through Christ happened and, uh, and hopefully to, to help each one of us to be uh, encouraged to witness and know that Christ is with us and, and to guide us through uh, many situations that we will come into in, in the days to come. And today I want to start out in uh, the Gospel of John chapter 4. And it's about the, the Samaritan woman at the well that, that met Jesus and, and how he um, had a conversation with her and how she uh, realized that he was a, a prophet. And uh, we, have, we have that Jesus told her many things that, that he could not possibly have known ahead of time if it would have been you or me. I understand that there's going to be some people who say, well, he's God, so he would have already known. Uh, but it, he's also our example to show you and me that, that we can know things by revelation that we didn't know for a special time, a special period, a special reason um, that God is using us for if we are willing to. We can always say no, but it's always better to say yes and to do what God is calling us to do. So here we have, we, we take up uh, this conversation, uh, this, this story um, towards the end of it. At verse uh, 27 of chapter 4 of John, and at this point his disciples came and they marveled that he was talking to this with a woman, yet no one said, what do you seek or why are you talking with her? Uh, now, understand, first of all, that she was a Samaritan woman. It, it was not a, 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 the custom of, the, of a Jewish rabbi or teacher was not to talk to a woman out in public uh, other than their own wives. And, <clears throat> and yet here Jesus is sitting talking with this um, woman. It's not Jewish, but, but a Samaritan, which, which the Jewish people um, looked down upon as a lesser uh, group of people than themselves. And being a woman on top of that, uh, you know, it was a, a surprise to them. But Jesus had plans for all this. <clears throat> Verse 28, And the woman then left her water pots, went her way into the city, and said to the men, Come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? And then they went out of the city and came to him. In the meantime, his disciples urged him to say, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat, which you do not know. Therefore, the disciples said to one another, Has someone brought him anything to eat? And Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his works. Now, let's, let's take a look at the. First of all, let's go back to, here's the disciples show up. There, she, he's talking, Jesus is talking to this Samaritan woman, which, which should not be happening, and yet it is. This woman came to the well at this time because of her situation, because of her past, because of what she was now living in. She didn't go there when all the other women showed up. She went there alone so that she wouldn't be ridiculed by anyone else. And yet, she came for water, but when she left, she left her water pots where they was at. She was so excited about hearing about what Jesus was saying and doing at this particular time that she forgot about everything she was doing and the importance of getting water and left to go tell someone else, go tell the men in the city about this Christ that she just met, this prophet that she had met. And she did it with tack. Is this the Christ? Could this be the Christ? Could this be the one we've all been looking for? Hey, could this be the Messiah that we were looking for? And 
the disciples, as this was going on, the disciples thought he was thought he would be hungry now, and he's telling them, "I have spiritual food to eat." He says, "I have food that." My food is do the will of God. I want you to understand that when you do the will of God, when you're doing ministry work, it is refreshing, if I can use that word. It, it is uh, not a burden. Uh, you, yes, you get tired afterwards, uh, but, but it's not a burden at the time. It's a joy at the time, and there's a peace about what you're doing at the time. Uh, it is... Uh, something that, that as you're ministering to someone and you know that, that God is in the midst of it and giving you the things that you need to say, you're no longer hungry, you no longer feel bad, everything else just fades away, and it's all about the glory of God that is in, enveloping you and who you're speaking to. And it's this kind of spiritual food that, that Christ is talking about is to do the ministry work that he was set before him and to finish his work. In other words, he knew what the Father's plan was for his life, and he was about to do it. It was in the process, and he was going to finish that work because he was being faithful to the Father. Verse 35. Do you... Do you not say that there's still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that which you have not labored. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Now, what Jesus is talking about here is for you and I, we may not see the immediate results of witnessing. We may even have the feeling that we have blown it, that we failed, that we didn't have <clears throat> any effect on the person or anything, but we want, to, want you to understand that, that some plant the seeds, and, and though it doesn't say it here, we know that there's some people that come along after us, and they, they what we call water the seed, in other words, they encourage a little more from what you do, and they build on that, and then there's others that will reap the salvation of that person that you've first witnessed to. And yet all of them that took part in this can rejoice in the blessing that someone got saved. So he's saying, you know, don't be sad that, that you just sowed because you're still part of the labor of of. of bringing people to Christ and, and uh, increasing the numbers in heaven uh, for eternity. Uh, you may have just uh, watered or cultivated uh, that seed a little bit by encouraging them a little bit, but someone else actually seen them get saved and, and, and go from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. But all of you had your part. All of you was faithful to do the part that you had. Just because you may not have been able to see the salvation of that person, you still had a very important part by witnessing to them at the beginning. And each one of us is called to witness. Now, <clears throat> verse 39 and many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the words of the woman who testified. He told me all that I did. Now, many of these people in this city believed because this woman was not quiet about her meeting Jesus face to face. And many of them believed by her testimony. 
just like many can believe by your personal testimony. Can I put in here right now that, that no one can fault your, your, your testimony of, of what you went through to know Jesus, how you became a Christian. That is your personal experience and your personal testimony of what Christ has done in your life, and no one can go against that. They may try, but they can't because it is your personal. You lived it. You experienced it. It's true. And he said, and he told me everything that I did. See, there's that gift of knowledge that Jesus was telling her facts about her life that he should not have known but did. And it's a supernatural knowing. It's a supernatural of knowing that this is true and these are facts about this person. And he used those facts to convince her that he was the Christ. Let's go on. And so when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them uh, and he stayed there two days, and many more believed because of his own words. Uh, then they said to the woman, Now we believe, not because of what you said, but we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Understand that first of all, she testified of what Christ had said to her, and now they sought after him, after Christ, and learned that now, not just because of her testimony, but because of what they heard, they know this is the Christ. And you see, that's many times how it happens with, with, with teaching and, and with uh, uh, testifying of what God has done in our lives by knowing and, and having people want to know more about Christ and they seek after him and that's part of the repentance and that's part of, of that seeking that needing to know is this true and I need to know it for myself okay now let's go to Matthew chapter 24 in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, um, here he's talking about the destruction of the temple, and he's talking about the, you know, the times. Um, he, he's talking about end times, and, and the question was, um, tell us, in verse 3 of chapter 24, tell us when will these things be, and what will be the signs of the coming of the end of the age? And they was wanting to know, Okay, you, you, you just told us about uh, Jerusalem uh, and, and the temple being, about the temple being destroyed and that, you know, you're going to raise it up in three days. And he wasn't talking about the temple. Of course, he was talking about his own body. But they want to know, what will we be looking for for the end of the age? And he tells them many things. He tells them, uh, well, we'll just read it. Uh, verse 4, uh, Jesus answers that, Take heed that no one deceive you, for many will come in my name and say, I am Christ, and I will deceive, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Now, uh, here he's, he's telling them there's going to be people that come in his name, even in the time that Jesus was here on earth, there was many that was trying to claim that they was the Messiah, that they was this anointed one that God had sent, and it wasn't true. And he's telling us, uh, take heed that no one deceives you. In other words, you personally need to know the word. You need to study the word so that you won't not only be an heir, but that someone will not teach you something that is against 
what God's word says. That is in error and, and lead you off into a, the into hell because, because of, of false teachings. Um, you know, there's going to be many that says, I'm Christ. Well, I'm, no, I'm not Christ. I want you to know that. I'm not Christ. I'm just a child of God. Uh, I was saved by Jesus Christ. And, and I live and, and teach for him. But he said, you know, here we hear the rumors of wars. And yes, we hear lots of rumors of wars and, and, uh, and troubles in, in many different places. And he said, this, this all is going to happen, but it's not the end yet. And verse 7, for the nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famine, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. And we see all that happening uh, even today. Uh, all these are the beginning of sorrows. It's almost the idea of, of a woman going into labor well, to deliver a baby. Uh, verse 9, and then they will, they will deliver you up into tribulation and kill you and will uh, be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will, will betray one another and will hate one another. Uh, then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Here again, we have to be aware of, of false prophets, of those that teach uh, things that are not in the Word, that are against what God says. Um, understand there's going to be tribulations. There are going to be um, people that dislike you because simply you are a Christian. Uh, understand that they will be false prophets that, that come in and they'll tell you many things and yet not be true prophets. Uh, verse 12, And because of lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. In other words, there's going to be a falling away. There's going to be those that have not kept the faith, uh, have, have been deceived, or has gone through tribulation and cannot, <laughs> doesn't have the faith to uh, trust God to bring them through that, those things. Um, so they will, they will grow cold in, in their faith. Uh, but he says in verse 13, But he who endures to the end shall be saved. We need to endure to the end, no matter what comes. Do not lose your faith in Christ. Always know that, that even in the worst of worst, God will take care of you. I can remember uh, I talked with a gentleman and, and, and he was he had cancer and and the first time I met him I thought well we had a nice conversation but you know oh well uh, but Lord you're in charge of this and I, I come back and talk to him several other times and then finally one night I was called and said please come over he wants to talk to you and I simply presented the gospel to him of John 3.16 that we all are familiar with. And he said a prayer with me, and he added to that prayer his own thoughts. And I knew that I knew that I knew that this gentleman had gone from thinking of, of, of a supernatural being to knowing Christ personally. And even though, I think it was a couple weeks later, he died of cancer, the cancer didn't win. I want you to understand that. Even though he died, the cancer didn't win because he's in heaven today. He's with Christ today in eternity. And, and that's the promise that each one of us has is that at, in eternity, you and I will be there. But we must endure to the end. Verse 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world as a witness to all nations, and then, and then the end will come. The gospel needs to be preached to the whole world first. And I want you to understand now with satellite TV, uh, missionaries, uh, this gospel is, is being reached out. If it's not reached the whole world, it is very, very close. So we are very, very close to that time when the end will come. And I believe it's not that far off. But I want you to continue to have the hope and the trust that Christ is in control. We may not be, but He is. Our governments will not be. You know, 
I know that during the election time, many people thought, well, you know, we, we needed to have this candidate or that candidate because that'll change things. And I want you to know, candidates, elected or not, is not going to change this world. It's going to take people like you and me preaching the gospel, loving people the way God loves all people, that's going to change this world. Will there be tribulation? Yes. God said there would be. Would take him at his word. But the gospel is going to be, be uh, preached and the gospel is going to be real to so many people. Would we like to have the whole world saved? Yes. But every one of us has to make that choice on our own. But who's going to believe the gospel if there's not preachers like you and me that teach the word? Okay, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And I just want to look at um, a couple verses here. Um, let's start with verse 4. And we have such trust through Christ towards God. Our trust is in Christ towards the Father that He's done all these things because He loves us first. Verse 5. Not that we have sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient at ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Now, what Paul is saying is, it's not my ability. I may have some ability, but it's not my ability because it's what Christ is doing through me. It's what the Holy Spirit is doing through him that makes us able to preach the gospel. And he's saying, you know, it is that anointing of God that gives us the power and the ability that goes beyond any kind of ability we may have had. And it's not the letter, the letter here he's talking about is the law. It's not of the law. This power, this ability, this, this help that comes to us. It's not by the law in the Old Testament, but by the Spirit. For the law taught us what sin was and is, but the Spirit teaches us the new covenant and of life from now on. So we live in the Spirit. That's what the Bible tells us that we need to walk in the Spirit. Uh, we, we need to, to uh, do these things in faith. Uh, it also tells us that uh, we walk not by sight, but by faith. Uh, these are things that, that goes beyond ourselves, that's greater than ourselves, and yet willing to reach out to others. Go to 1 John. I want to go to 1 John chapter 4. I'm trying to... First John chapter 4. And I want to look at verse 4 for just a moment. You are of God. First to know that when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you are of God. And His provision is for you. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because He who is, who is greater than... He who is in you is greater than he is in the world. In other words, the Holy Spirit in you is greater than the kingdom of darkness, of Satan and his dominion. Um, he's a ruler of this, he's the principality of this world now, the ruler of this world, as far as uh, being able to influence people. 
And yet, when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we stop that influence, or at least the ability to, to sway our minds, because now we've become spiritual beings in a fleshly body, following after God, that we're His little children, and that we are overcomers because of who's in us. And He's greater than that one in the world. We have Christ in us. We have accepted Him our personal Savior. We have the ability to say no to sin. We have the ability to trust God for everything and know that whatever we do, we can do it for the glory of God because of, of Him who's in us, because of that God filling in us, that Holy Spirit that's in us, that Spirit that moves us in the direction that is pleasing to God, that shows faith to God, that we can be a, a, a person that follows after the Word who is Jesus Christ. It is in Him that we can witness. It is through Him that we can witness. And it is with Him that we can achieve many many things that we could not achieve by ourselves. I do these things not in my power, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm not the one to be glorified, but everything is to bring glory to God. Whether you're in business, whether you're a preacher, everything you do, you need to bring that glory to God because of the one that's in you is greater. And with that, you can be a witness. Do not be afraid because Christ is with you. Do not be concerned about whether you say it wrong or right. God can make them hear it right. Right now, I ask you, who are you in Christ? Are you a believer? or a faker. God loves you and wants you to witness for him. God bless you. Pastor Doug Bryce, uh, pastor in Decorah, Iowa, and I want to welcome you uh, to Times of Refreshing and invite you in to listen to the show, to be a part of what God is saying to you, but also to me as we uh, open up the scriptures, which is the foundation of our life. God speaks to us script, uh, through his scriptures to us, and as we get into his word, we find it refreshing. So won't you join me again in Times of Refreshing as we journey through God's activity in our life. Revelation chapter 21, verse 6. Today's encouraging word has been brought to you by your friends at the Christian Television Network. And God impressed upon.